Poor application performance is damaging and expensive for organizations. Why this happens is fairly straightforward. Customers can't get to the website they want, or they can't purchase products, either because the application responds poorly or doesn't respond at all. And that's just for web-based applications. Internal company applications which suffer from poor performance waste time, and time is expensive, both in lost productivity and in missing. In this demonstration, we will see how Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate enables you to measure, improve, and verify application performance under the most demanding conditions. This ensures that your application performs predictably regardless of the situation. We will start by adding a web test to our project. What we are doing is using our web application as though a customer would. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate is recording our actions. We will use this as the foundation for our testing throughout this demonstration. Once we have run through our scenario, we can stop recording and Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate will generate our web test. Our recorded steps are just the foundation of our test. We can use the editor in Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate to make this test much more sophisticated. For example, in a web application, customers may want to repeat a request several times. Maybe they're refreshing their search results to get an updated price. It would be tedious to do that in a recording, so we will mimic this behavior by modifying our test in the editor. We can use a counting loop construct and iterate over this request. Now this section in our test will repeat 10 times. Web performance tests are aptly named because we can interject performance criteria in a number of places. We can use response time goals to ensure that individual parts of our application are performing as expected. This really helps us identify performance problems early on. This is when they're the easiest to fix. For example, our login experience is very important, so we specify a response time goal of just one second. There's always some variance in web applications, so we set our response time validation within an 8% margin. Now let's run our test. Most of our tests passed, but we can see that one of our requests has failed. Looking closer, we can see that the request was processed just fine, but it took too long. Even with our 8% margin, this particular request was just too slow. As we mentioned earlier, performance problems are much more manageable if we can catch them early. So we can easily start a performance investigation right from our test case. We can choose from a variety of investigation strategies. We need to be sure that we don't add very much overhead when we do our investigation, otherwise our data will not be accurate. The default strategy of sampling is an ideal, low overhead way of starting our investigation. When we run our test again, this time our performance profiler will be gathering data for us. Now we have data about how our code is performing. Performance data is always very dense and difficult to navigate. Even a short test run can generate volumes of data. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate helps us sort through this data with a number of different graphical views. For any given method, we can immediately see where the suspicious code is. This is an area where we should do more investigation. We won't worry about how to fix this issue yet, but let's just keep looking at ways of narrowing down potential performance issues. Web performance tests are great because they help us verify performance goals on a scenario-by-scenario -scenario basis. That's much better than trying to tackle performance issues on an application-wide basis. But we can narrow things down even more by using unit tests. Unit tests are focused on smaller chunks of code, so they help us catch performance problems even sooner. We can build a performance investigation from this set of results if we want to. 
Performance-oriented unit tests are also great for verifying any fixes we might make. Web and unit tests are both effective on their own, but now let's look at how we can amplify their impact by using another type of test, load tests. Let's bring together the work we have done so far. Load tests help us leverage the work we have done with web and unit testing. A load test is really just a container for other types of tests. Load testing will simulate a vast number of virtual users that will interact with our system. That interaction will be based on the test that we select. To make our testing as realistic as possible, we will emulate a wide range of browsers. Browsers all have subtle differences. For example, different browsers use a different number of connections to download a single web page. All of this can affect the performance of our application. Let's finish up our load test and get started. An area where significant investment has been made in Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate has been in how load testing emulates different kinds of network connections. This is an area that's often overlooked. Web applications will be used by customers who are connecting from a variety of different network types, LAN, DSL, dial-up, etc. While that does not seem like a concern, each network type has different latency characteristics. Most internal testing is done with a default LAN connection. There tends to be very, li very little latency between each request. This lack of latency can sometimes hide race conditions and deadlocks. To catch these kinds of problems, Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate enables us to simulate a variety of network connection speeds. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate goes a step further by actually installing virtual device drivers that emulate those connection types. This ensures that we accurately simulate those kinds of legacy connections that might cause us problems. Let's run our load test. When our test is complete, we can analyze the results. Just like the profiler, the load testing results are very dense. Luckily, we have a number of graphical views that help us sort out the information. One view that aggregates our load testing is the details view. We can see what each virtual user did from a request perspective. The length of each line represents time, so any long lines are potential bottlenecks. We can do the same from a transaction standpoint. For example, we can see how long, relatively speaking, it takes to book a flight while the application is under load. Analyzing this much information by hand is not easy or accurate. There are some very powerful new features that we can take advantage of in Excel. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate includes a load testing plugin that helps us build reports based on our load testing results. These reports help us answer the simple question, did our fix help or hurt performance? As simple as that question is, the answer is very difficult to find. Normally, we would have to wade through gigabytes of performance data to find that answer. But with Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate, we just need to create a comparison report. We just have to choose two load test result sets, one taken before our fix and one taken afterwards. We can immediately and easily see if we have improved things or not. This report even breaks down which pages perform better or regressed. This makes it easy for us to determine if we are doing better or worse. The comparison report works for two load test results, but what if we want to know more? This is where the trend report comes in handy. We can use it to compare all of our load test results and see if we are gradually improving or regressing. This time, we can bring in all of our load testing results. We'll skip a few runs that were aborted. These charts show us quickly if we are moving in the right direction or not. Improving performance is never going to be an easy development task. In fact, most would consider it one of the most difficult things to do in software engineering. 
However, with the help of Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate, we can catch performance problems early with web and unit performance tests. Once we have those results, we can quickly sort through reams of data with a number of graphical views. Finally, sophisticated reports like this one help us determine whether we are improving or not. Being able to count on those things ensures that we will be in the best possible position to deliver a high quality product to our customers.